Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to succeeding in this particular certification. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are continuing with our set B of chapter 2 and looking forward to understand that what could be the other possible questions which can be asked during the examinations. And the very first question on your screen is question number 12. And here we are talking about which of the following statement about the DevOps is correct. Now, if you remember from the discussions and the sessions we had, the DevOps is a process which aligns the development, development and testing together and in terms of binding it in a way that it continues to move ahead and uh, get into a pipeline where everything is almost automated uh, in terms of like it's a triggerable event which basically gets conducted. Now, the only objective here is to of course have maximum automation possible and at the same time, uh, we should be looking forward to have uh, a reduction in the time of doing all this activity but the uh, CICD pipeline is created in such a way that it caters all the need of the uh, process and also delivers a quality code via the CICD pipeline. Now let's look at the options what exactly is correct about DevOps in these options. Option A says uh, to speed up the releases continuous integration is used to encourage developers to submit code quickly without the need to complete component testing. I think let's keep it very straightforward now. Uh, so far we have come and we have understood a lot of things about it. Component testing is a part of the CICD pipeline. The major activities which get conducted as a pop-up pi pipeline part that is CICD, that is uh, of course the smoke test or build verification test, the component test, the static analysis, the integration test, and regression testing. These are the ma minor common elements what we should always have automated through the DevOps pipeline. So we cannot do this without component testing. Component testing at most becomes important to be included into the DevOps pipeline. Option B says uh, to be able to update and release systems on a more frequent basis. Uh, that's number one. And then many automated regression tests are required to reduce the danger of regression. I think we had this discussion very clearly that by having DevOps, we are trying to reduce the risk, not danger basically, but yes, uh, one way it is true the risk of regression because with help of DevOps being 100% automated, we are reducing the risk of regression being conducted every single time the code is checked in by developer. So in that case, of course, we are encouraging code developers to uh, include high quality code. Uh, at the same time, regression testing being conducted every single time a code is checked in. Now option C says, uh, to treat both developers and operations equally, the tester will allocate more effort to release testing by operations using a shift right approach. See, again, I think this was the biggest myth related to DevOps that uh, the testing was not used in that word. It was going from development to operation, which many people thought. But if you remember the syllabus, in the syllabus, we clearly told you the here the word development includes testing in it as a single word. So it's development plus testing put together called as testing. So that is where it is certainly not that the testing will be conducted later. Even if you just read the last word of this particular statement, it says shift right approach. And we are not talking about shift right at all. We are always talking about shift left by using DevOps. And that's where C goes wrong as well. Now let's look at the option D. Option D says to create increased synergy between testers, developers, and operations, the testing must become fully automated with no manual testing. This option is absolutely right, but saying no manual testing is not incorrigible because manual testing has its own significance and value. Wherever automations are not possible, we have it as an alternative that we can go ahead with manual testing. Eliminating manual testing is not the goal of DevOps. DevOps goal is to try to maximize automation. Again, the word maximize is something what we are using, not 100% in a way that manual testing loses its visibility or we can remove that from the testing. Manual testing has its own value and significance and uh, will remain forever. So DevOps has never uh, defined their benefits or one of the goal as we are trying to eliminate manual testing, not never. So whenever you see such type of options, you're free to eliminate them. So put together the right answer for this particular question after all the discussion is B, to be able to update and release systems on a more frequent basis 
many automated regression tests are required to reduce the danger of regression testing is a key reason or is correct about DevOps, which fulfills the requirement of it within a project or an organization. So that's pretty much the way how you should basically look forward to handle such questions because sometimes they could be very tricky, but one word will create a big difference to conclude to the right answer. So let's go to the next question and we have the next question as number 13 and it says which of the following is most likely to be performed as a part of system testing? I think the basic thing as we always do is recall what is there in system testing which we have covered. We talk about system as a whole, we talk about environments, we talk about product risk and we can even get started with some of the non-functional testing like usability, compatibility, etc. So let's quickly have a look what the options are trying to say because the question doesn't have anything to talk about. Option A says uh, security testing of a credit management system by an independent test team. Uh, yes, as I said to you that uh, we can talk about some of the non-functional being conducted right from system testing can kick off. But uh, of course, the executions can take place. But if you remember that golden statement in the syllabus, if you have not, please watch the tutorial. Once again, I've discussed very well about stating that all the four types of testing and all the four levels of testing, like, sorry, all the four types, that is white box, black box, functional, non-functional. And then uh, if you talk about uh, the levels of testing, uh, we can conduct them anywhere, okay? All the four types can be conducted in any level, right from component, system, integrations, and acceptance. So that is where, if you look at it once again, uh, security testing of a credit management system, uh, by an independent test team can kick off from here. That certainly makes sense, but let's cross check with the other three option. Option B says uh, testing the interface of a currency exchange system with an external banking system. Now testing the interface of a currency exchange system with an external banking system is more of like system integration testing. And it's not about system testing because system testing at any point so talks about a particular system as a whole, not integrations between the systems. So there is a dedicated level for it called as system integration testing, and that's where we talk about it. So B is not correct about system testing. When you talk about C, C says beta testing. I think we should just stop here to read the option, but however, that's not our professionalism to do. Beta testing of a remote learning system by Courseware developers. Beta testing, of course, the reason we stop there is because it's a part of the acceptance testing, not as a part of system testing, and that's why C makes it uh, Again, one of the non-pickable option. And if I go to option D, option D says testing interactions between the user interface and database of human resource system, uh, which is pretty much again the component integration or integration testing, which is done within the system. So it's not external anywhere mentioned like option B. So uh, it is pretty much the integration testing which we conduct uh, within the system and it's two part of the system which is making it to one particular product. So I think this is a very simple some time to really conclude, but if you pay attention to each and every word, the way I'm paying attention and highlighting it is just to make you understand that how you should highlight it when you're reading the examinations, okay? So put together, the right answer for this particular question is, A, security testing of a credit management system by an independent test team, because of course, considering test system testing is always an independent test team, not the one who developed the application. So it's not done by developers. So that makes it to the right answer. Let's move on to the next question. And the next question we have is question number 14. And it says, which of the following statement is correct? No context, nothing. So everything depends on the option. So let's start reading that. Option A says uh, regression testing. So of course, this question is about regression testing and comparison to that of confirmation testing. So regression test increases increase in number as uh, the product progression uh, progresses whereas the number of confirmation tests decreases as the project progresses. I think the first part is absolutely fine. Regression testing would grow in size as the project progresses or evolves over a period of time. But it's not that the confirmation testing will just reduce. Okay, it totally depends on the number of defects. The more you have the number of defects, uh, the more the confirmation testing will be conducted to confirm the fix. But it is not a relationship between regression and confirmation that if regression increases, the confirmation decreases, okay? Coming to the option B, regression tests are created and run when the test object is fixed. I think we should just rule out this option right here because that's the wrong definition to regression. This is the definition of confirmation. 
However, to continue, whereas uh, confirmation tests are run whenever the test object is enhanced. So right opposite to each other, the definitions have been swapped. So B is a wrong answer. Let's look at C. C says regression testing is concerned with checking that the operational environment remains unchanged. Not at all. If our operational environment changes, then there is no adverse effect of that on the system is what the regression checks. Okay, so we don't uh, secure our environment changes uh, with respect to regression testing, whereas confirmation testing is concerned with testing changes to the test object. Uh, no, we have maintainability checks for that. Uh, whenever the change is performed, we can conduct that or whenever change is performed, we conduct regression to see the side effects. So C, in fact, goes wrong. Let's look at option D. Option D says regression testing is concerned with adverse effect in unchanged code and uh, whereas uh, confirmation testing is concerned with testing the changed code. Exactly true, right? Now, this unchanged code part, if you look at the option carefully, is a very tricky part. We can say that no need is we conduct regression testing when there is a change in the code, right? No, this is how they play around with your mindset. Regression testing is concerned with checking any adverse effect on the unchanged part due to the change part, of course. The change part is the fix, right? And due to that fix, do we have any unchanged impact? Like impact on the unchanged part is the question. So regression testing certainly talks about testing the unchanged part and confirmation talks about the change part. And that makes it very, you know, uh, correlative to that of our definitions, what we know. But sometimes when we go in the flow, let me tell you another important thing, team, that in the examinations, they take care of putting the right answer at the bottom purposefully sometime because by the time you reach all three options like a b c the way you read it the d would sound a little idiotic okay so don't let that happen make sure that every single option is read with preciseness with its need with its understanding and separability okay which means independency each option should be read independently to conclude with the right answer okay so with that context put together the right answer for this particular question is D, that is regression testing is concerned with the adverse effect in unchanged code, whereas confirmation testing is concerned with the testing of changed code. And that makes it very clear that how exactly we should tackle such type of questions where options are repeated. Trust me, if you go wrong in reading this options uh, in one time, you would waste a lot of time getting to the right answer. So it's very, very crucial that you have patience and read it once and do not have to read it again and again. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.